Super City Kids, it's Tara and Abby. And today we're going to learn more about God, how He is always in control of everything and how He can use anything, good or bad, to work out His perfect plan in the end. I'm so excited to be here today. It's so exciting to see you. You look so fit and active. Thanks. So we've got soccer trials coming up and I'm really trying to get ready. Watch this. The thing is, I'm not really good at it. I can see that. Why don't you just try another sport? I could, but I really, really, really want to be part of the soccer team. Well, why don't you just give the soccer stuff a break for now and enjoy your time with us at Super City today. Today we're actually learning about the Israelites and how they were about to face a great battle. But God sent someone to fight in their place. God always makes a way to rescue His people. You know what would be really amazing? If someone could take my place and secure a spot for me on the team so that I can just join them at practice and play games with them. That would be great. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work in the soccer world. You can't just get someone to take your place for the trials. Kids, soccer doesn't work that way, but God does. Jesus took my place. He took the punishment for my sins so that I can be one of God's children. Romans 2 verse 23 to 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Kids, Jesus takes our place. Let's go watch the Bible story. God's Story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, nah, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelites' strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. 
Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. David fought Goliath. He used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story. Romans 2 verse 23 and 24. For all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Kids, the Israelites were very afraid of Goliath and the Philistine army. They were powerless against them. Even King Saul was hiding away from a scary giant. But God had a plan for His people. God always has a plan. He sent David at just the right time to fight Goliath. In our lives, we may feel like we have giants to face too. The biggest giants we'll ever face are sin and death. We are powerless against them. When it comes to giants like sin and death, we are just like the Israelites, afraid and powerless. But God had a plan. He sent Jesus, the only one strong enough to conquer sin and death, to fight in our place. When we put our trust in Jesus, we never have to be afraid of sin and death. He has beaten those giants once and for all. The Bible tells us that Goliath was six cubits and one span tall. That was the old way of measuring. These days, we would say that he was almost three meters tall. Kids, ask your parents to measure you so that you can see how tall Goliath was in comparison to you. You could even measure your mom and dad to see if they came close to his height. Goliath was a lot bigger than anyone here. Do you see now that the Israelites had a very big problem? We also have very big problems. The problem of sin. God hates sin. When we have sin in our lives, it keeps us far away from God. God knew that we couldn't fight sin on our own, even if we tried. That's why, like He sent David to fight for the Israelites, He sent Jesus to save us from sin and death. Wow, God is amazing. Let's go worship Him, kids.
Romans 2, verse 23 to 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Kids, in case you missed it, today we saw that Jesus took our place on the cross. Jesus is the only one powerful enough to fight in our place. When we put our trust in Jesus, we never have to be afraid. What time is it? Time to pray! Lord God, thank you for the Bible and for all the things that we learn about you when we read it. Thank you that you made a way to save us from our biggest giants, sin and death. Jesus, thank you for loving us so much that you took our place on the cross so that we could be joined with you forever. Our lives will never be the same. We love you, Lord. Amen. Kids, thank you so much for joining us again today. We hope you had so much fun. Remember, you can go download the PDF if you want to engage with the lesson in the week. Also, go follow us on social media. And in case you were wondering, I do actually get out of my pajama pants, so please listen to your parents when they ask you to get changed for the day. Bye kids, have a good week. Kids, the Israelites were very afraid of Goliath and the Philistine. <laughs> yep, booger free. Sorry, how do you make a tissue dance? <laughs> <laughs> Put a little monkey in it. <laughs> I look like I've been crying. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to get serious. Oh, you're wicked. I was there, so now you're going to feel the wrath. Focus. Oh, seriously, you're wicked, joking. Bring it in.